In the previous video, Greybox in using Pro Builder, we created this floor plan layout for a multiplayer battle arena scene. In this video, I'm going to show you my workflow for modeling game ready assets using Pro Builder directly in Unity. We will be looking at modeling techniques, UV mapping, swapping materials, lighting, and post processing to set up a completed level with final 3D models. ProBuilder is a complete 3D editor inside of Unity. It features all the standard 3D editing tools found in commercial 3D editing software, including a powerful UV editing studio. In the description for this video, you can find a link to download an ebook on ProBuilder to find out more. For this video, I am using a free material pack from the Unity Asset Store but you can use any materials you like, including ones you have created yourself. If I check the Yugi's material folder that I have just installed, we can see that all appear a pink magenta colour. This is displayed when the shader is not recognised. Now these materials were designed for the built-in renderer, but I'm using the Universal Render Pipeline. URP and HDRP both have inbuilt converters that quickly allow you to convert materials to fit those pipelines. So select all of them by holding shift and clicking on the last one. Go to edit, rendering, materials and convert selector materials for URP. This will then convert for either URP or HDRP. Now these materials can be dragged into the slots in the material editor and you can add extra slots by clicking the add button. In the grey box in video, we created a handful of prefabs in the prefabs folder that were then duplicated to make the hundreds of items in the scene. We can now create 3D models to replace these prefabs. So let's start with the door one. Double click to enter the prefab. In edge mode, select a top edge and add an edge loop. Now do the same on the other side. In face mode, hold shift, to select the front door faces and with snapping switched on, and the snap value of one meter, I can now drag this out to exactly one meter and that defines the door shape. Ensure that you have hidden set to one so that you can select back faces as well and select all faces. In the material editor, assign the material. Open the UV editor. By default, it is using auto, which means the UV maps will conform whenever you make changes to your object. And this is really useful. But when you have completed your design, we can then modify the UV maps. At the moment, it is using UV wrapping. Now this is similar to GIF wrapping. A GIF is wrapped up with GIF paper, but this 3D object is using tiled textures. There are other types of UV mapping available and you can read more about that in the ebook. But for this object, UV wrapping will work well. I will convert this to manual and use box projection then fit UVs. We can now see that the UV maps fit the texture perfectly and they look great in the scene. We now need to duplicate the door one object by clicking Ctrl and D or going to edit and duplicate. Then I want to mirror the door on the X axis. Now the door is complete. You can exit the prefab to check it in the scene. During the gray boxing phase, we identified some darker areas of the map. A solution to illuminate those dark areas is to include emissive materials into these columns. The emissive materials cast out light that will brighten up dark areas. Right click, choose create a new material and call it emissive. Set the color to blue, switch on emission and make that blue as well and give it a strength of two. Now add that to the material editor. Go into the column prefab. At the moment it is very angular, so let's give it more sides. 12 should sort that issue. Now I want to add edge loops and drag them up or down to create two small bands at the top and bottom and the wider band in the middle. And I want to select the faces in the middle using select face ring. Then using scale, I can scale this in to create an interesting shape. Then to extrude, and I want to extrude inward using a value of minus 0.5. Now still with scale selected, I will scale on the green Y axis to scale the items together. And do the same for the other rings. 
In face mode, select all faces. If I apply a material, some are going to work better than others. As we modify the geometry, it makes the shape more complex. So there are issues with UV wrapping. Open the UV editor and we can see that each face is separated using auto UVs. So we may need to manually modify the UVs. If I select this face and select face ring, now convert to manual and I have two projection modes. Box projection is going to work best here, joining all the faces together in a row. For this area on the top, the box projection won't work as well. Instead, we can use planar projection that copies the exact shape and works really well for these faces. We can then move this around to try and match up the edges. Different UV mapping techniques are covered in the ebook. But for this item, I'm going to use a material that is more simple to cover any issues. So I can convert all of this back to auto and reset UVs and now apply a more simple material. And that looks fine. Now I can go back to these rings, use face loop and assign the emission material. Do the same for the other two. Now you'll notice that some of the faces are faceted with hard edges. We can select all faces and in the smoothing section remove all smoothing using this icon. Now all hard edges are visible. In some cases this may be useful, but for this object I would like all hard edges to be smoothed out. I'll go into orthographic mode so I can select all the faces but not the very top faces. I'll assign a smoothing group that smooths out the hard edges. Now I can select the top face, click on grow selection to select all and assign a second smoothing group. So notice objects can have multiple smoothing groups assigned and I think that looks better. Now I'll edit wall 3. In the prefab go into edge mode. Add an edge loop along the side. I'm going to switch on my snapping as I want this exactly 2 meters from the top. Now extrude the face by 1 meter. Now back to edge selection. Drag just the bottom edge down by 1 meter, creating this interesting shape. Add an edge loop and drag 2 meters from the side. And do the same on the other side. In face mode select all faces and assign a material. In the UV editor, convert to manual, use box projection and fit UVs and the material fits nicely. Now I'll select all the top faces and apply a material. I want to select these two front faces and extrude them in by minus 0.3 and this creates an inset. I'll give these faces a material. Now that kind of looks weird. In the UV editor we can see the two faces are separated. So we can merge the two faces then in the UV editor, choose box projection and fit UVs. Now I want this texture to be a bit smaller, so I'll click auto and set a good tiling amount. When we exit the prefab, we can check it in the scene. Now back in the prefab, we need to duplicate and mirror the wall object. For wall one in the prefab, I'm simply going to apply two different materials. Select all the faces and assign the first material. In the UV editor, convert to manual, use box projection and fit UVs. Then select just the back face and assign the second material. Now when we exit the prefab, the scene is updated. Now in some areas there can be too much detail with the same material tiled. So for each instance we can drag in different materials into the material slots. So I'll drag a new material into the slot. And I can also hold shift to multiple select instances and then change the materials. And I've done the same thing with the floor tiles. It has a floor material on top and the ce ceiling material underneath. Like with the walls, you can change materials on the instances. I have used a material with an alpha map from this bridge. Ensure alpha clipping is checked in the material options and it creates nice looking shadows. We can also use other models outside of the Pro Builder shape and poly shape. So we can bring in any model we like and turn it into a Pro Builder object. So I'll just create a capsule. I'll use Pro Builder eyes and that will turn it into a Pro Builder mesh. So I'll add two extra edge loops and select two faces. Then I'll extrude by 0.3. Selecting the outer edges, I can add a bevel. 
This will add facets or rounding to the sides. I'll set the bevel to 0.05. Now I can smooth all these faces. I'll add an interesting material. Then selecting just the new faces, I'll assign the emission material. This is an interesting prop. I'll rotate and then duplicate, dragging the new one down below. Then duplicate again and drag down. Drag the duplicates into the original as child objects and I can now move the object around easily. I can see some jagged edges in the scene. These are aliasing. So in the main camera, enable post-processing and use the TAA anti-aliasing to fix jagged edges in the game view. I can also set high quality shadows in the directional light. I can modify the post-processing effects on the global volume. This can be applied during the modeling phase to approximate how the final scene may look. Although in larger teams, there may be different departments that will handle the final look for the game during a later stage. Now we can see how dark this area is. So I'm gonna add a light to the doors. In the door one prefab, work with just one half at a time. In face mode, select the front face. With scale enabled, Hold shift and drag to inset the face and assign the emission material. Now those new faces are now stretched, so select all the faces, go to UV editor and use box projection and fit UVs and that fixes the issue. Now do the same for the other half of the door. I've added area lights to the scene. These can be found under game object, lights and area light. Now these are baked only, so they won't show up until you bake a light map. On this one I've used an orange colour, and it just introduces a bit of colour interest to your scene. This one is a red colour, green over here, a blue up here, yellow, so there is a good mixture of colours. Now I want to create wires along the ground that curve, so for this in the package manager you can download the splines package to create this. To add a spline, go to Game Object, Splines and Draw Spline Tools. There is a marker that shows you your starting position. Left click to add points. As you move the mouse you will see that the spline begins to curve. Press Escape when done to complete the spline and that now becomes a game object. Add a component and type Spline. Now choose Spline Extrude and it adds geometry. We can reduce the radius to make the wire thinner. At the moment I'm in spline editing mode which allows me to click on a point and move it. Now when I click this icon I go into object mode and I can just move this up above the ground. Now assign the material to the spline object. When you have finished creating a few 3D splines we can convert them into 3D models by pro builderizing the spline objects. Then export as an OBJ 3D model. Or, if you prefer, you can go into the Package Manager and download FBX Exporter to save it as an FBX 3D model. You will now get an exported 3D model and texture. Drag the 3D model into the scene, place it inside the props object and copy the transform data of the spline you want to replace. Paste component values on the new 3D object and it's now in the same place. Switch off the original spline. Now drag a material into the material slot for the new 3D object. I've also added cylinders along the ceiling. These are pipes. Now to create more props, add Pro Builder cubes. It's two by two by two. Hold shift to preview and left click to add. Select all the faces and go to UV editor, convert to manual, box projection and fit UVs. Now apply material from the material editor. And you can lay out as many props as you like. To bake a light map, first mark all objects as static. Now go to Window, Rendering and Lighting. If you haven't got a light setting, just create a new one. I'll use one texel per unit and very low resolution for testing purposes, so it will bake very quickly. Now before baking, I'm going to modify the emissive material. At the moment it's not strong enough to properly affect the bake, so I'll change the strength to a 6. Now it does blow out the lights in the scene, but this is just while we bake. 
For the directional light I will set the intensity to 8. This will increase the illumination of the bake. And in the lighting tab, click generate lighting. Once completed, I'll switch off post processing just to check the light bake. The emissive lighting is nicely baking into the ceilings. Overall this looks great and there's nice colours on the walls. I'll switch post processing back on and bake at a higher resolution. I'll put 10 as the texel resolution and default medium. Click generate lighting to bake a new light map. Once that is completed, return the emissive back to 1.5 and the directional light to 1.5. And the scene is looking good with baked lighting. I want to add particle effects into the scene. Instead of creating them myself, I have downloaded the particle effects pack from the Unity Asset Store. Once installed, I will find the effect I want in the prefabs folder. In the grey boxing video I left notes indicating where I will place my pickups. So now I can drag in a particle effect to show where pickups are located. In the inspector this is set to loop. I'll place particle effects in all the pickup locations. I also want to add characters. I am downloading a free character from the Unity Asset Store. Now these can be placeholder characters or the final characters for your game. Uh, this character has been designed for the built-in renderer. It also uses custom shaders, so converting materials for URP won't work. We can select a material and manually switch it to a URP lit shader and drag in the texture. We can now drag in the character to the scene. I have set up a custom animator controller using just the run animation. This controller is dragged into the animator component. I will add the AI script, a nav mesh agent and a rigid body component to handle physics. I'll switch on the AI overlays. Now I want to switch off items such as particles, enemies, splines and the main player so they don't bake into the nav mesh. Now switch on the nav mesh object and clear any existing data and rebake. All the new objects are now cut out of the nav mesh. Now switch all of the items back on. You may sometimes notice gaps like this. Switch off the object underneath and you will see it is not affecting the nav mesh overall. Now we can test the game with the AI enemy characters. And that brings us to the end of this video. So we've covered a variety of topics around using ProBuilder to create final 3D models directly in Unity. And notice how easy and efficient it is without the need to move back and forth between Unity and other 3D editing software. In the video description below you can find a link to download the ProBuilder ebook to discover more. Thanks for watching.